so he, she sought the permission that what should be done and this is our opinion this is the realization that if the if the surgery to this level is not done if the uterus is not removed there will be a danger to the life the relatives gave consent that no 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 please save the life which is more important with that consent form the surgery went on and the uterus was removed the patient got healthy but since she sued the doctor she said i am unmarried you spoilt my life who will marry me because my reproductive organ has been removed so my life is spoilt what will i do to live how dare you remove that and with whose consent and this is a landmark judgment for you samira kohli versus dr prabha manchandan 2008 supreme court read it interesting situations happen in medical legal cases balbir versus union of that uh, gangaram hospital another landmark judgment delhi high court the doctor was sued because the type of chloroform he used as an anesthesia before surgery and during the surgery surgery was scheduled for appendicitis gall bladder was removed what the doctor can do at that last moment it's an urgency on the operation th table certain things are after opening the body one comes to know but law is minutely observing the conduct of the doctor because these are medical negligence cases whether you have obtained the consent or not and that is where a very very landmark judgment of the courts from usa canterbury versus spencer 1972 usa which changed the concept of consent across the world where the this canterbury's judgment carved out a term called informed consent from consent now today the supreme court of india is following that there should be informed consent not merely consent and the difference between the consent and the informed consent is absolute disclosure even of the risk factors of a treatment the procedure the medicines the treatment absolute disclosure and then if the patient agrees for the treatment then the patient is having an informed consent otherwise the consent obtained is the patient doesn't know for what consent you are seeking you must have aware been aware of the consent it's defined under contract act section 13 and section 13 succeeding section 14 talks about the free consent do you know what is free consent and the difference between consent and free consent free consent is which is free from section 14 to section 21 <coughs> caution undue influence fraud misrepresentation mistake i'm sure you must be aware of all this so there and the under the indian contract act 1872 there is consent free consent express consent implied consent but canterbury brought it to informed consent this is how the law evolves this is how the law keeps on developing so every doctor today is under obligation to provide an and to obtain informed consent not merely consent and as a lawyer if you happen to get such case and you have to cross examine a doctor you have to examine the consent form whether it was informed consent or it was simple consent 
So it's not only confidentiality, but the consent is also very vital and important. In medical jurisprudence, what is very, very important to understand that as a lawyer you must be aware of the provisions and practices of medical science. <clears throat> Similarly as a doctor or a medical practitioner must be aware of these provisions of law because in the current scenario in the current times it's not enough to be a doctor or expert of your field of medical science, you must be aware of these provisions and development. Because the moment you make a slip, you are liable. It's need to be under self-regulation. This is also a very, very important and vital judgment which laid down the whether the doctor can be held liable or not there are tests which is also called bolum test again a very landmark judgment from the u.s courts bolum versus Frere hospital and that is why it is called bolum test because in medical science there can be alternatives to a same treatment. I am not talking of various streams of treatment or faculties of medical science. Even in allopathy, suppose a surgery has to happen. There can be alternatives either to do an open surgery or to do it through the, what do you call it? Laparoscopy or ultraviolet through so there can be alternatives. Now if there are alternatives provided, whether the doctor has chosen the right path or not, determines whether he is neglig negligent, whether he is liable or he is not liable. And that is what is called Bolum's test. Because the negligence has parameters. Were you absolute negligent? Were you treating the patient when this was not required at all? Were you conducting a surgery when the surgery was not needed? This is absolute negligence. But if there is a choice available and somebody does opt for one of the paths in Marinard's judgment, Bolum's test was further increased. In Marinard's judgment, it has been said that if there is an error of judgment by the doctor, then he is not negligent. Because then it's a case of error of judgment. That instead of open surgery, the doctor chose for laparoscopy and the laparoscopy was not successful. But at least laparoscopy is also a recognized path of surgery. He has not done something absolutely shocking which shocked the conscious that what did you do? Was it required? Like for example, in the judgment of uh, Paramanand Katara versus state of UP, a road accident happened. And the patient was rushed to a hospital and the hospital said, we don't have the facility for treating. Take him to that hospital, take him to that. And the patient was kept on shifting from one hospital to the other. Similarly, in this uh, Paschim Bengal Khod Majdur judgment, 1996 Supreme Court, a neuro treatment was required and no hospital, the government hospital did not have the neuro faculty. 
matter went up to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court said that the state government is under obligation to provide treatment. One cannot simply refuse that, no, 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 we don't have the facility, take them allow, away. You have to, even if you do not have the facility, you have to provide the primary treatment. So that the patient is in a position to be taken to the right hospital. These obligations have been put by the Supreme Court and now this is the law of the land. Because whatever is being fixed by the Supreme Court under Article 142 of the Constitution of India becomes mandatory to be followed by all the authorities below it. So now, no doctor, no hospital can refuse treating even if he doesn't have that facility. The primary treatment must be done. As a lawyer, you must know that. If a doctor is refusing to do a primary treatment, to preserve life, to save life, to at least make the patient in a position to be taken to the right and specialist place, that much the doctor cannot refuse. As a lawyer, you must know that. And therefore, this is an area of specialization, medical jurisprudence, medical legal cases. Interesting judgments are there not only by Indian courts, as I told you, some of the Western courts' judgments. And mind you, there are certain judgments of Supreme Court of India which are followed by the Western world. It's vice versa. Not only that we only follow their judgments, they also follow our judgments. It's important for you as the lawyers of the future members of the bar to enrich the courts with your knowledge and to assist the courts to reach to justice in these complicated field of law called medical jurisprudence, medical sciences. It's complicated because it includes a lot of science which you may not have studied while pursuing your law career. But as a lawyer, you cannot escape it. As a professional, you can't escape it. So you have to understand these sciences also, medical science, body anatomy, and the clubbing of this knowledge of body, medical sciences, and law creates a niche for yourself. I wish you all a very, very bright future as a medical jurisprudent lawyer, as a medical legal lawyer, because it's a specialized branch. All the best. Jai Hind.